here. So I was just listening to Peter Zion on the Ukraine war. He talked about how Russia's invasion was imperialist, fascist, and genocidal. Now, I don't think any of those descriptors are accurate. I don't really think they shed uh, important light on things. So, uh, there may be tiny elements of imperialism, I don't really see any. There's that, no, there are no elements of imperialism, there are no elements of uh, fascism. And to the extent that there is a genocide, then genocide is such a hotly contested definitional controversy that professors who specialize in genocide have fallen out with each other and stopped speaking to each other. Right? It's that highly contested. So, John Mearsheim makes the point that the that wars tend to escalate. Right? So the more the United States did for Ukraine prior to 2022, the more arms they shipped them, the more training they gave them, the more they de facto integrated them into NATO, then the more likely it was that Putin would feel threatened and would feel driven to invade, just as any other leader of Russia would likely have the same motivation. Right? The Russian war on Ukraine has very little to do with Putin. So, just like any leader of Germany in the 1930s would have been incentivized to try to win a quick, fast war for Europe, like Germany had a good chance to win World War I and World War II, and that they didn't win didn't mean that the decision was a mistake. This meant they didn't quite pull it off. If they'd launched World War I ten years earlier, they would have won. Now, it's not that uh, national leaders are completely irrelevant, right? No Hitler and no Holocaust. So, any leader of Germany would have been incentivized to go to war and try to take control of Europe, but only Hitler would have launched a genocidal war against the Jews. So I'm primarily a structuralist, I look at the structure of international relations, I look at the structure of situations more than personalities, but sometimes the personality matters. So, Donald Trump is a unique personality. Uh, Adolf Hitler is a unique personality. So I went around that island directly to the right on my walkabout to North Sydney yesterday. So I see a lot of use of the term rift. Right? Uh, deep left joker like uh, Ken Brown has made a long video on what is rifting. It's by popular demand and he says it's when you promise something good and it's fraudulent. Well, drift does have a meaning and it's theft. It means small time theft. So I don't think any meaning beyond that is particularly useful. So as a put down, I don't think it's impressive. And it sounds like a drifter. No, not really. Unless they're engaged in theft, petty theft. It's not drifting. So fascism has a meaning. Russia's invasion in Ukraine is not fascist. Uh, fascism is a political movement that arose between World War I and World War II in Europe as a reaction to the rise of communism. Imperialism has a meaning, and that's where you take control of other countries. And uh, Putin doesn't want it to take control of all of Ukraine. And that's evidenced by going into Ukraine with only 175,000 soldiers, never shown any evidence of trying to take control of all of Ukraine. He wants to peel off a few promises, and he wants to provinces, and he wants to wreck Ukraine so that it will be less of a threat to Russia as a have had a launching base for a NATO invasion.
No, I don't like it when words are used sloppily when they're just thrown around as pejoratives and they don't fit. And Peter Zine does this. He gets in high dudgeon. Right? He did this with January 6th protesters. He talked about the murdering policemen. And there are no policemen who were murdered on January 6th. The only person who was killed directly on January 6th was Ashley Babbitt, who was shot by a member of uh, uh, the police. So there were people who died on January 6th, aside from Ashley Babbitt, but they weren't killed. And they weren't murdered. But uh, Peter Zion would talk about how the January 6th protesters would, you know, beat policemen to death. And so he's a lot of fun to listen to, like a Richard Spencer. But part of what makes them so fun and so compelling is they don't always circumscribe and circumcise their stories to comport with the facts. People who try really hard to be accurate and fair are just not going to tell as good a story. They're not going to be nearly as dramatic, not going to be likely as compelling, not going to seize your attention quite as much, they're not going to be as entertaining because some people feel can try to constrain themselves to what is true. And uh, Zion goes off on these flights of fancy, which makes him a lot of fun, but uh, not so accurate.